So today was iPhone 16 pre-order day and I successfully pre-ordered mine this morning. I decided to go with the iPhone 16 Pro in black titanium, one terabyte configuration. And I'm coming from an iPhone 15 Pro Max, one terabyte in natural titanium. And the reason why I decided to step down this year is because the iPhone 16 Pro series screens are getting bigger. I mean, we have the 6.3 inch for the 16 Pro and 6.9 inch for the 16 Pro Max. And, and this was a hard decision to make because of the battery life being better on the Pro Max and seeing your content on a bigger screen is always enjoyable. But when it comes down to the ergonomics and the comfortability of holding a smaller phone, it just feels so much better in the hands. I still have my iPhone 13 mini here and RP to it and it just feels so comfortable to hold in the hand. And I don't really have the biggest hands in the world, but I could go either or, and that's where things get tricky. I could go with the Pro Max, or I could go with the smaller uh, 16 Pro, but I usually always go with the Pro Max. So in this case, the 15 Pro Max, the 14 Pro Max, and the 13, I just went with the smaller one, and the 12, I went with the smaller one. So to have a breath of fresh air, I decided to go with the 16 Pro. And that's basically my reasoning. And part of me, I'm gonna have that kind of FOMO in my brain because the Pro Max is a bigger one. It has the best battery life and things like that. So I decided to also order a 16 Pro Max in desert titanium as well. Like, I don't even know. I wish I could see the phones in person. Shout out to everybody who've been invited to the Apple event. You guys can see how the colors look like in real life. I, I'm just like an average consumer. <laughs> I'm just an average consumer. I gotta see how the phone is gonna look in my hand on release day. Which by the way, I picked up every single color for the 16 and the 16 Pro, but those aren't gonna be my primary devices. I'm mostly focusing on the 16 Pro, one terabyte in black and the 16 Pro Max in uh, one terabyte in desert titanium. Those are the two phones that I might flip flop between the two, but, and it's kind of hard to believe. I picked up both of them in one terabyte. Ugh. But yeah, so for the iPhone 16, I picked up all the colors. So blue, pink, teal, black, white. And then the 16 Pro also picked up desert titanium, black, white, and as well as that natural titanium, just so you guys could decide on which color you should go with. And, um, and you guys already know it's an annual channel tradition, which by the way, if you guys want to see that, make sure you guys click on that subscribe button with notifications on. Cause I'm also curious to see how the iPhone 15 pro natural titanium is going to stack up against the natural titanium in the 16 pro. Um, I heard Apple redefines the shades this year. So all the colors have been refreshed in its way. So I'm curious to see how they're going to look like in real life. And next week, literally, we just gotta wait next week today. And next week today, I'm gonna have it. Why am I always going with one terabyte? Is one terabyte overkill? No. <laughs> right now, currently on my 15 Pro Max, I'm using 800 gigabytes on my one terabyte iPhone 15 Pro Max. So it's a no brainer to go with one terabyte. Now, at some point, I will have to go back delete some photos, delete something to uh, make room. I was really hoping that Apple would made a uh, two terabyte option. And as you guys can see, this is how much stuff that I have. So I have my messages, I have my meta glasses. Instagram is taking up a lot of space for whatever reason. I think that's just due to the caches. I have my YouTube and really a lot of this stuff I can delete. But the beauty thing of one terabyte, you don't have to worry about space at all. Mostly my photos and videos are for projects that I already worked on already, TikToks that I filmed, or even stuff for my YouTube channel. So I gotta go back, delete them. I shoot some ProRes stuff too as well, some S-Log every now and then. And, um, and yeah, and I gotta clear out some caches for Instagram. So a lot of stuff could be cleared up and I could probably have like maybe 500 gigabytes uh, remaining, but I still need that one terabyte option regardless. So one terabyte for me isn't overkill at all. And the reason why I'm mostly aiming towards the black titanium this year, I never had a black iPhone in a little while. I had space gray uh, back with the iPhone 6, which was 10 years ago in 2014. And the reason for that at the time was just due to the fact of the all black front opposed to the white front. 
So that was the last time I got a black phone, quote unquote. So, so yeah, the black this year just looks sleek. I just saw a couple of videos that people had access to the iPhones a little earlier. And, um, and not to mention my MacBook is black. My AirPods Max right here is black. It just makes sense to have a black iPhone to match with your Apple products. And I think you guys should probably do the same too if you're deciding on which color. But at the same time, the natural titanium matches with my Beats pill perfectly. Matches it perfectly. And natural titanium is gonna look good on most cases too as well. That's something to look out for, which by the way, I am gonna be reviewing a couple of cases. You know, going from an iPhone 15 Pro to a 16 Pro is a redundant upgrade. I, you know, as a tech enthusiast, this is an upgrade where I shouldn't even be even looking at. Essentially, all I'm really getting is that camera control button on the side and a faster chip and a 48 megapixel ultra wide. And now, yes, it's still an upgrade no matter how I look at it, but it's very incremental. I'm still gonna get Apple Intelligence on the 15 Pro and Pro Max is still a thing. I still gotta get the phones to test out and review. So that's the reason why I'm even upgrading. This is still a fantastic phone even to this day. And if you plan on buying the 15 Pro, make sure you guys watch out my all color comparison. That thing is still a perfectly fine video and all my testing too for the 15, I'll link them all down below. Here's a fun fact. The iPhone 16 Pro is 6.3 inch. The iPhone 11 Pro Max is 6.4. So if you're coming from an iPhone 11 Pro Max, essentially you could get the 16 Pro and feel right at home. So essentially you have more screen at a smaller footprint body. That's the breath of fresh air that I'm talking about. I'm going from a 6.7 inch display to a 6.3. If you really do the math, that's like a, a 0.4 inch difference. It's gonna be more lighter, it's gonna feel more compact, and especially if you're gonna slap a case on there, just things to really think about. But I'm gonna be back. I'm gonna be back getting the Pro Max, so I may go back to a larger phone next year, but for the time being, that's why I'm going with the smaller phone. It's just two years of Pro Maxes, let's go with the smaller phone this time around. And even with the battery life, the hours is gonna be 22 hours of video time, opposed to uh, 27 hours, comparing it to the uh, 15 Pro Max video time. And I know with the 16 Pro Max, it's gonna have a whopping 33 hours of video time. So if you think about it, yes, I am taking a sacrifice with battery life. I'm gonna be filming a day in the life, extensive testing, case videos. You guys don't wanna miss a thing. Make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on. Drop a like on this video and comment down below which iPhone 16 did you pick up? And I'm getting text messages. I should have put my phone on do not disturb. That is where I'm going to conclude today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you guys did, appreciate it with a thumbs up. And other than that, I hope you all have a simple day. Peace.